Ladies and gentlemen, we're running it right back. We just hopped off of Icebox. We're going right back. This time, it is going to be Exet taking on Immortals. And this is a storyline that almost tells itself, especially if you got to catch the action yesterday. Once more today, my name is Tanner Metro. I am still joined by Karenito Price. We're headed back to Icebox, but this time, Exet and Immortals. And uh, I mean, Exet, they've got a fire lit under their butts. Well... A fire for starters, but now they're going to have to go against a kind of interesting comp. It's something that we actually mm -hmm. just saw, Tanner. It's going to be the Viper Omen that I'm just incredibly interested to see. Yeah. Because we're lucky enough to see both teams that actually regularly run this sort of deal. So, mm -hmm. you know, first to start out, let's go ahead and zoom out a bit. What are the teams that we're looking at here? Like you said, Exit Immortals. But I want to focus mainly on Immortals to start with because they are a massive question mark. Now, as far as I know, they are going to be playing with Supermen, but they also brought in another player alongside it, that being Nature. Or, sorry, uh, Chemicals, rather. Mm. I think Supermen is in for Nature. Still waiting on confirmation for that. But we're talking a completely different set of players in, so you have to have a lot of question marks on how did Immortals look getting to top eight in the first place, yeah. and how are they going to do against an on-fire exit who had an incredible day yesterday for pretty obvious reasons. And nothing boosts momentum like grounding a team that has all of this momentum, right? I mean, you the the Exet team, they've got a lot of flair. They've got a lot of personality. They've got a lot of attitude. They're all over social media. Not in necessarily a bad way, but, you know, when they're hype like this, they're going to let you know that they're hype like this. So I would imagine Immortals are looking to kind of starch this flame or, or simmer this flame a little bit. Uh, and, and going forward to the semifinals. Now, in the last matchup, we saw Sentinels taking on Ambox. Should Xset take the three-game series against Immortal, it's going to be Sentinels looking at another Viper pick coming on through. As we do have those maps for you guys, we do know it is going to be Icebox for map number one. That's where we're going to be headed. And it's not necessarily a guarantee, but we're, gonna, we're feeling pretty comfortable about that Viper pick coming out. And then Haven and Bind to follow. It feels like forever since I've seen Haven. I know, right? I almost miss it in some ways. Yeah. And I think Haven is really unique too because it's another one of those maps where even when Brimstone was at his least meta, you still very occasionally, usually lower tier teams, saw him being picked just because he does have a lot of lethality to bring out in post plants in particular but that's a different map we're going to be starting with icebox so i want to focus on icebox for starters mm -hmm. and x set they have a 60 percent win rate on this map small sample size though only five maps played and actually now that i look at the stats they don't actually seem to run vipers so like you said it's not a guarantee that we'll see it maybe unless they want to bring it out right here but i think it's probably a little bit more likely that we see bcj on the sova and we did on the omen as per usual so Maybe we're not going to see back-to-back -back Vipers, but if there were a split, theoretically, yeah, it would be there. And it sounds like, I mean, I'm looking over here at the Immortal sides of things. This is their map pick, right? and they've got two games played on it. So I wonder if these, these new uh, introductions to their roster and players kind of up their ante or up their confidence on this map as a whole as to what they're going to be bringing don't that what we have here in the stats are going to be completely correct because it looks like they obviously run viperless and no, not really anybody's playing viper outside of uh anbox and x set and sageless as well i wonder if you know they picked up chemicals nature whatever it may be and that kind of adds that sage that makes icebox a little bit more desirable because we do have these rosters ready for you guys and we'll get to see who is actually going to be locked in for immortals it is actually going to be nature. Okay, so we were, a little, oh, okay. we were a little thrown off guard by that one, thinking Superman would be in for nature. But instead, uh, I mean, both nature and chemicals filling in or coming into the team for this one. And nature is a player I got to catch play a, a whole handful of breach and was just incredible. A, a player that really stood out to me in tournaments, very vast tournaments, small tournaments across the board, wherever we were seeing. Uh, SOR play, I was getting to catch Nature really pop off, really stood out to me. So now I'm not only excited to see him kind of make his way into this, you know, tier one scene and, and playing on the, the main stages, but what he brings to Immortals against once more this Xset team that firing on all cylinders, everybody on the same page and the personality. I can only imagine that that adds so much more to their momentum 
that team is just a team that vibes, and I love that about Xset. <laughs> You always have to love the players on Exit as well, just personality seeping from them, and plenty of yeah. great players as well. But I want to talk about one more time again, real quick about Immortals, is that you said that you saw him play a lot of Breach, and that's what's so interesting about this Immortals roster and why they're such a big question mark, is because since joining this roster at least, Chemicals, or excuse me, uh, Nature has actually been playing Sentinel. So he's been on the Killjoy, he's been on Cypher, He's not been on that breach, mm -hmm. you know? For the most part, that has been reserved for Gangsta. So it's going to be a different kind of look for these new players as well. Kind of taking up some new roles. I think things become incredibly interesting because I didn't have the pleasure of watching Nature and Chemicals all too much in the past. They're just unfortunately the team that I have done not too much homework on uh, back when they were active. But look, whoever's doing the scouting at Immortals must, must know exactly what's up because... It's a little bit more of a niche pick, you know, not the normal free agents that you see on the market. And considering they have completely stomped through some of these opening stages, and I think have only lost one map so far, that being the Cloud9 Blue in the round of 16, it looks like things are going well with this new uh, roster that they have lined up. So one of their wins actually does come from that Cloud9 uh, matchup on Icebox. It was a really close match. There is, there's got to be something, and I'm hoping that we get to see it firsthand here as to why Immortals, with that 50% win rate, not having the, the longest track record here on Icebox, do choose to pick this as their map pick. And Xset, they're already locked in. The response, obviously, coming out from Immortals. And there it is, Nature on that Killjoy. Now we get to see it played out. We spent a whole lot of time here. I think it was 20 three rounds in the last series now we're gonna get some more and i don't expect to see anything less than uh especially when like we said the uh, the percentages are pretty close in this yeah again <laughs> icebox is such a new map that it feels like any given day you can see anything happen but that's what makes it so volatile and so amazing to watch again i have i wouldn't say become a fan of icebox in recent times but i've definitely grown to appreciate it as I've watched more and more of it, those new changes that came a couple of patches ago, I think definitely helped make things a little bit more approachable. As we are going to be watching Immortals starting out on the offensive side, I believe. Unless I'm tripping. No, excuse yeah, no, it's Immortals on the offensive side, excuse me. Um, and right now, a little bit biased towards A. So, one thing I want to point out real quick as well. My player to watch is going to be BCJ. He has been phenomenal this tournament. And... Almost every other tournament, it feels like it's about time that he got picked up. But keep in mind that Exit have four players set up over towards A, and BCJ is one of them. So this could be scary for Immortals. And for Exit, we did going to be rocking that Reyna in this one. So looking to stay aggressive. That turret now out of range will have the flank. It is going to get called back, and the shots to come on through. We did the first to fall. IMT strike for three. If you're able to get some, Dwipo. It's one back as well. Now that spike, spike to be planted. 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 Low HP on one. The shots are going to go wide. The dash away to stay to safe. And now the odds standing. are even. BCJ, the member that you had mentioned just a moment ago, unfortunately will fall. And man, that was a back and forth pistol. I think that's what we're going to see for the rest of the game, Ito. Just blood all over. Quick bursts as well. It's hard to keep up with everything that's happening. And this kind of reminds me of an NRG game that we saw a little bit earlier with just how quick they move and the way that they react on top of it. But this mm -hmm. time there's a lot more counterplay and maybe Xset weren't nearly as successful as NRG were in the past. So Immortals, they do a good job at staving off the scary parts of just that first pistol, but they need to do it again. And it shouldn't exactly be the tallest order in the world here. It's another full stack, actually with the exception of BCJ this time around, from Xset, as they just look to try to pincer down a couple of players. Oh, uh, okay, chemicals? I'm guessing he accidentally hit his button there, or something of the sort. Uh, unfortunate way to start, but at least the mortal strike back. Yeah, that, it, that was an awkward way to get on in, as a couple of kills traded back and forth once more. It was a shock dart kill. Oh. To come out and find one, and... Not too much going to be found by that recon bolt, so things have since quieted. But now you have to be wary. Although Xset down around and down in Arsenal, they've been able to pick up a couple of weapons. Pushing into the smoke, they're going to run right into each other in the face of shot up. Aaron will go down. Now that Spectre that has since been picked up, it's good for one kill and Gangsta. 
with shot up trying to close things out once more it's bcj in a 2v1 a sheriff in hand the dark three any less oh. doable does have that info oh. not gonna find the shot there rushed it a little bit the spike was yet to be planted but at the end of the day that one kind of goes the way we were expecting immortals picking that up and now we'll see how x set battle back we did it's too early to tell obviously but on the reina i'm expecting a lot from this player so to be zero and two you lose pistol you lose the next one that's a okay now that we did has a rifle in his hands alongside the rest of his team i'm expecting frag after frag here needs to have a strong performance or else imt should be able to run away with this one rifles across the board no bonus round so imt not looking to give anything up here ito and once again, we're seeing that exit really biased towards A early. I, I'm kind of interested. I mean, at what point does this eventually get sniffed out and Immortals start to abuse it even more than they have just in the early stages of this game? Because even when exit previously were stacking, we have small sample size only of two rounds, but they manage to still kind of bulldoze their way through. It looks like Exa, okay, it is interesting. They have kept the camera to kind of watch over towards mid. So a very alternative uh, approach that I feel like we've been seeing towards mid so far. Just wondering, I mean, again, when do they finally start catching on to the fact that, hey, this could be free of charge. Right now it's slow though. The mortals slowly inch their way up. Aggression, nowhere to be found. 5v5 post plant doesn't seem unlikely at this point and since there's not many ultimates in play i think you're going to be seeing a full retake in action here build up that utility and go for the safest possible round nice paranoia alarm box gonna buy some time jc standing from the back nature gonna assist him with another weeded goes down in the rifle round starting to fall apart for xset immortals up 5v3 here in this one and they just have to play for the spike that is all the utility out the window now. There is still a Hunter's oh. Fury available. Last Chemicals from standing. downtown to wow. sit him down, and it's looking to be oh. Wallace here. BCJ, wow. the last alive three times in a row, and Immortals. Ito, they're looking to make a statement here on Icebox. In a statement they did make, man. Disciplined util usage right there from the Immortals side. Exit consistently felt like they were in, you know, the passenger seat there, really. Yeah. Exit were just completely driving over them, and my lord, it looks absolutely beautiful. That paranoia at the very end from JC Stanny was nothing short of great. It feels like a lot of the time we do see, uh, you know, maybe a little bit of an outclass from the other omens. JC Stanny, I think in recent times, has had a little bit of a couple of rough Here. performances, but he has been doing absolutely phenomenal this entire tournament so far. And obviously, to start off this game, but to shut me right up will be the side of X set as Pierre finds the opening kill. Gangsta will, will, will be able to trade it out, excuse me. Has that Hunter's Fury in play, but we get into a bit of an awkward 4v4. JC Stani, though, was praising him a lot now. I want to see if he steps up to the plate. I want to go back and analyze this round. Did somebody kill Gangsta's drone or did he just cancel it and find that kill? Because had somebody killed that drone, it takes him out of the animation and it allowed him to get that kill after a huge pickup on the member that was supposed to be protecting him. Pure R went in, picked up one and Gangsta traded him. So I, I wish I could go back Sending and look ahead. at that because maybe some miscom there as they pushed on up for it. But as you stated, a 4v4. Spike now in the hands of nature as he looks to push on up. Nano Swarm goes down. Now, there's no real way to stop this. If somebody is mid, you could be sprayed through the Radiantite box, but that's not gonna be the case this time around. Spike goes down, nature gets out, and once more, an even manpower fight in the post plant, 4v4. Turret's gonna get some info, spots one out, but those shots gonna give him away, and Chemical's just making it look so clean from downtown. The reset's coming through the taps <laughs> on top of it all, and it's not flawless, but it looked to be that way. Only one member falling, IMT. These guys look polished. Absolutely polished. A great start for Gangsta as well, and he has yet to die. Two ultimates, very powerful ones at that to play with. I mean, IMT, they are just absolutely sailing smooth right now. They have not met any serious contention just yet. 
And it was a pretty unfortunate loss for Xset, but it's not the end of the world. They have another buy in them, but those money wells are starting to dry up. Take they need to go ahead and keep an eye on that eco at every given moment, because in the blink of the eye, blink of an eye, this could turn from bad to worse. And that mm. is not the best start to look for if you want to try to get a response back into this game. Your duelist taken out. Uh, ooh. Who are we, who are we looking at for oh, best rifle? Because, okay, no, it's, it's looking like rifle right now, but Chemicals is definitely putting, uh, giving these guys a run for their money when it comes to the accuracy, the precision here. With this Vandal, now we get to see that fight. No, it's Gangster to sit him down. I thought that might have answered it between Rifle and Chemicals. The spike going to be delayed for now. There's that spray through the Radiant box that we spoke about previously. Another fake to draw out some rounds, and you're getting low here. Those magazines, you're running out of them. If you are exit, no IMT still run. have a lot of time on the clock. Now the Hunter Fury remaining from Gangsta in an awkward position, trying to find everything they can, and now it's a 1v2. It's the man of the hour we did for exit to try and find the first round. One gonna swing on left. by, should be a free plant to go on through. He tries to spray through the box, not gonna find too much onto nature. Shock guard from Gangsta, gonna go wide. That one will get a bit of value. Now we did push this they up. They don't each other. spot each other there. And it's looking <laughs> like Nature is gonna take his position prompt inside kitchen. We might see a fight on the site between Gangsta and Weeda. Gangsta with the high ground. The spike planted inside the tube. This would be a huge round to pick up here for Weeda. As that nano swarm goes out, it's gonna stop him and he's running out of time. He might just be forced to save here, Ito. He's gonna go for another peek. Not going to find anything here, That's and I would think that now. he just tries to find his way out. He's running out of time, and die yeah, for the I guess maybe he's just going to die by the sword here. He tries to get away as he pulls out the Sovereign Sword, and yeah, he is going to make it out. <sighs> we did, unfortunately, not able to find anything, but just smart heads-up play there by IMT. Both Nature and Gangsta playing off the site, playing around the spike. They don't even hear the threat of a defuse, and they grab another round. It's been calculated yes but at the same time immortals they've been showing off like this crazy i don't want to use the word wild card factor because i feel like i've used that and abused that so many times today but this crazy like wide swinging factor because i was keeping an eye on chemicals there and while the mm -hmm. city was Shadows pretty much traveling. completely safe chemicals decide all right you know let's go ahead and take a fight over towards mid let's see if anything is there and he managed to stay alive didn't find any frags either but He's done that sort of you thing before run. and has found a lot of success with it. Idea. Immortals are looking lethal right now just to start with. Again, the scouting from Immortals seems to be doing them good way. so far. Another push will begin, this time a lot quicker. Immortals, they toss down the lockdown, and they're going to be pushing it right behind it. Someone should be detained with this. Stuck inside, BCJ can't do anything. He's felled, and so apparently is everybody else on actually oh the side God. of Exit. There's a struggle back and forth. Chemicals with a late potential uh, vote for himself for the best rifler in NA because he has been proving it so far. From rifle to blades to operator. Shot up, going to join him there. Finding a kill on the Now Dwyfo needs to go huge. This was the guy in the run in here battling toe-to-toe -to -toe with chemicals. Uh. It's gangsta to find that kill though once more. Two rounds in a row to sit down Dwyfo and Man, wow. it is IMT. You kind of said it's aggression, it's chaos, but it's controlled chaos. And I mean, what gets there's nothing more controlled than being 12 and I oh. know. Gangsta man. is, I mean, he's going huge this game. The undying, <laughs> it's just unreal. He is immortal. Oh my god, that's how these choke. How did I not think of that one? <laughs> that's low the hanging joke. fruit right there, baby. <laughs> The punchlines seemingly sitting right in front of us, but right now Xset seem like the punchlines to Immortals. We saw Xset fell the beast of TSM just yesterday. This is a team that we know is absolutely lethal. I'm not sure if we're going to be seeing that crazy wild style on this round, but however, the sheriffs could potentially make the argument for it. Nature, of course, with, with two just shuts me right up. And what, I mean, what can you even say at this point? Immortals, that's another case where they feel confident enough to take these fights. I understand it's against a Sheriff, but considering you just lost a player to a Sheriff, it does definitely take a bit of cojones to go for it. Once again, the spike will be planted. Exa, still with a gigantic goose egg. 
Look to maybe switch things up, but I don't think this is around that it happens. Pure here with the sheriff. We've seen what he's been able to do, but it shot up with the high ground chemicals. Wow. Showing off the operator. And Twyfo in a 1v4. Exit just have not been able to find their footing. And I think at the very least, you just go for exits here. 1500 <laughs> Could be enough to be able to buy in the next round. Maybe not full utility, but should have the arsenal behind it. Except once more, they fall down. And now we're starting to see why IMT grabbed this map. Now we're starting to see just how strong it can be. And this win rate start to skyrocket on Icebox. This team is a problem here. Granted, it has been a lot of aggression towards A, but they've been mixing it up back and forth. Gangsta again being, you know, deathless. It, it, it helps a whole lot, and I don't think every game goes like that, but Immortals have found their home here. This is their gamer house. It's here on Icebox. Uh, they have definitely found a nice home territory. They've come, you know, kind of come back to. It's the, the nice homemade meal of maps, it seems, for them. They look incredibly comfortable in such a new setting for them, but there's still potentially two more maps in this series on top of Icebox, and let's not count Icebox done yet. Waifo, he actually gets the opening in favor of his team. And Xset, for the first time in a while, maybe see a light at the end of the tunnel. As we did, makes it a little bit more bright. Suddenly, Immortals are on the back foot. This is the first time they've been in a situation like this. What is going to be their call? Right now, judging by the radar, it seems that they want to end up over towards A. But I'm wondering if maybe they go ahead and keep their Killjoy as potentially a, a late factor to flank towards mid. This will have to be a very, very powerful push, though, over towards A. I mean, really, you're not leaving that much uh, fat to trim off right now. Exeter are a scary team. They can easily take this and... Well, obviously, they are favored. But Immortals, I don't know. They've been flawless left. so far. Cover going out. Anything can happen, Tanner. Flawless so far as they faint over they towards A. Nano Swarm going to go out. We did with the Lear. Pure are going to get on the board with the Operator. Now, here comes the Firing Squad and BCJ off the site with the Hunter Fury finally coming online. Exit. They took a deep breath in the break in that round. Things were moving pretty slow, so they're able to regather themselves and find a round. But now they need to do it four more times for the best half they can hope for. Doesn't seem insurmountable. This will be their next big hurdle to jump over. One thing I neglected to mention in the last round, Tanner, is the fact that they were running double operator. And, you know, it did them good there. I'm not going to say necessarily change the round in or not in their favor but it, it's something to definitely keep an eye on because look at how these angles will change up as a result drone. bcj behind this drone if he gets a tag here maybe see him spam through yeah speaking of which oh if he just fired right there he had a chance so nothing with the operator to start with maybe immortals are starting to catch on to it so they'll do an aggro drone through not finding any info for their trouble but Immortals have a lot of powerful map control right now. They've already had one sit on top of A for a while, and they haven't heard anything. So although things stay even, right now we're looking for that dam to break up something. And I think Immortals just want to conga line it in. Cut noise as long as he possibly can. Burst up onto the site. The bread and butter of the A-bomb site. Revealing the hunt begins. There's the start. Paranoia ultimate's going to be used as well. The Empress now online. JC standing up top, gonna drop down, find Thwipo. This is gonna open up the site completely on 30 HP. JC standing will go back Smart. and reposition. Might find two on the flanker. He spots out the leg, so they've got the information. But on the site, the operators are popping off here. BCJ, Aaron gonna be bringing up the rear for this squad. Nature goes huge with that. Huge. Now it's all up to one. Gangsta, he was deathless before. Now needs to be deathless in this round, but he's completely pincered. A rifle now in the hands of BCJ, no longer the operator. Pure R, though, cannot say the same. Oh. Still hanging on to that operator. He's gonna try and find the spray down. Oh. BCJ comes out on top, going clutch for three. Put exit on the board once more. Such an important round. It gets expensive towards the end of it. You're gonna see someone towards the end. Yeah, no, BCJ is gonna stick this. I'm guessing they're looking for, yep, double op. There it is. So it will be tossed through. Really smart heads at play to exit for getting themselves back on that double operator because it definitely did so much work in that one. The difference appeared in the kill feed, if not nothing, if nothing else. 
The fact that they got, I think it was three kills right as the spike went down. Unfortunately, it's impossible to catch all the angles, and I don't think Immortals caught all the angles either, because they were definitely caught off there. Smart by Immortals, Gangsta, excuse me, uh, at the end of it to try to isolate those fights, but Here. BCJ has been definitely performing up to snuff. And Immortals, for the first time in a while, seem a little bit baffled. So they'll change up their approach, look to go towards B. They're full sending it. There is one player holding Ooh. towards mid, but they're all taken care of. What in the world is going on here? So strong. And the fight back is oh. even stronger from Shot Up. Three kills? That's not allowed. It Take took three members. From X set to find three kills, it only took Spike shot planted. up to answer back. BCJ One just barely gonna go wide on that shot. Not oh. gonna miss that one though. The near sight doesn't matter. Shot up with six HP would have loved to have had that kill. And his no way. Up dismisses away. The neural theft gets the information. The oh. face comes through and Thwipo wow. comes out on top. What a spicy round, but X set are not giving up yet. It takes so much effort for them to do it. No one else found a kill in that round, and yet Immortals nearly snuck away with it. Except, you know, again, take a deep breath. They still took the round at the end of the day. Beautiful kill by Thwaifo to finish things up here. Smartly played clutch at that. Next set, they will retain that double operator setup. They remain okay. They've gotten three in a row, two more, in order to secure that best possible halftime score. And they're looking better as time goes by. Yes, that was a scare. But again, think about what it took to even get that far. Shot up with an amazing 4K. That's not always going to happen. Far and away, they've been looking pretty good here. Except definitely a recovery in form. Mortals have been stopped for a little while. But trying to once again bring up the rear. Will be shot up as he gets the kill onto Aaron. Trading things back, we're into a 4v4 Tanner. A 4v4, out. but low HP on this attacking squad. That spray down only went good for one kill, but it did so much damage. Now that lockdown on the site is going to detain one. They're going to oh, find the kill. Nature going to be the benefactor. Shot up, grabs another. Now BCJ, operator in hand, needs to go huge in a 1v3. Low HP on one, sits down the Empress Spike dethroned. Planted. He sees the cape. One leapt away, the other planted the spike. He's got an idea, but he only has 21 HP. Is that going to be enough? The shock dart surely would have sat him down, should have been on target, ahead. but it wasn't. BCJ in a 1v2. Recon bolt going to be taken down. One going to be sent back in return. He tries to wall bang it. He peeks out with the classic. Nature was looking to peek. Not going to do it. 9 HP to 21 HP, but another member to worry about. BCJ just has to <laughs> send it. He hops up top. And IMT finally grab one back. Last I mean, this is the, the Immortal squad looked immortal for quite some time, but X set, they proved that they can and they will bleed. And we're looking at quite possibly an eight to four half should X set keep it going. And one more thing to really kind of bring up is the fact that they're not going to be able to bring out the double operator setup anymore. They don't mm -hmm. have the funds necessary for it. I wouldn't be surprised if. Pure maybe drops the uh, the Phantom over to Thwaifel, that way he can pop Knives, but no, they're going to stick with it. Knives will be popped maybe a little bit later, but it's the final round of the half. It's now or never, Here. quite honestly. Forced to respect a little bit of space, Xset, BCJ in particular, will pop the Hunter's Fury. And they actually push up right behind it. That's a smart setup. I'll get to it a little bit later because the action is still happening. With Shot Up pushing towards mid, BCJ catches a free frag. That is beautifully played. Kind of a call and response from Exa as they get two players strong, three players strong, excuse me. And things are looking better for that four-day half tanner. Swinging that way. Chemicals though back <laughs> in the spawn. What an angle. I mean, there's nothing you could do again. You just gotta tip your hat to that. Nobody expecting that one. A nice shot there is chemicals going skeet shooting on the imposter. Not going to spot much else as everybody on exit. Now they're headed back. Their aggression is going to stop. They're going to go back. They're going to play things in that default fashion to try and secure the best half that they can. Chemicals does get tagged out. No ultimates available here. Spike in the hand. My MTs, they creep on up. You see Stanny, full HP. Going to toss out the dark cover. Paranoia going to be queued up as well. This one 
Thrown across the site. I don't know if it got a whole lot. We did still hanging out. Chemicals, though, can open things up with a kill onto the enemy omen. Now, we did hanging out inside the smokes. Two, both members going to be spotted out by the recon bolt. Oh, trying to get remaining. that spike down, but he's just going to get no run down. And BCJ to close it out. He starts it off. He closes it out. Exit. Battle size. back. Four to eight at the half. Now on attack, they need to go beast mode. That was so scary at the end, too. Kind of a nice solo effort at the end to deny that spike plant. There was eight seconds left as he killed the carrier, and that carrier would have to haul just to go ahead and get over to the spike, much less get it planted safely. So well played at the end, basically securing it so they didn't even have to worry about a post plant. Look at this again from Shot Up. I am baffled how he gets this next one here. Look at this, just a complete turnaround. I need his sensitivity, his crosshair, his everything, but whatever. We'll get to that later. All in all, a very good finish from Xset, looking a lot stronger. Immortals definitely yeah. not looking that way anymore, but they still look strong and like the dominant team in this game. It's map number one, and Immortals now are going to be on the defensive end. I'm wondering how things change up here. That turret spotting one means that they're probably going to bring a rotate over, and yes, look at that. Immortals are now going to be pushing towards mid. This is such a cool call. This is, I mean, it's different than anything we've ever seen here. As we did, gonna continue to play aggressive. He does finally get sprayed down, but it's one for one overall. The frenzy from JC standing comes out on top. He's able to push up and find the imposter as well. Nice little weapon upgrade. Gun game into the making here as he upgrades, but switches back. Now in a 4v3. Unfortunately, low on HP is that omen. Nature gonna push on up. They're gonna go for the defuse. They fake it once. Recon Bolt not gonna get too much as they swap positions inside the smoke. Dwipo gonna try and cut IMT down. He hops on in like a madman and it's all up to BCJ. Tossed up that recon dart. He's got the info. He's got one kill, but he's got to reload. As IMT will grab this pistol round. Nine to four, they go on their map pick. Oh, and you see a little bit of tactical crouching on the body of BCJ. The fallen man. He gave it a good college try, but at the end of the day, they flunk out. Again, Xset. <sighs> Definitely looking a little bit more mortal, but... I, I really just... I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of a way to verbalize how I feel about that setup. Is that it feels like so many things need to go right for it to actually be fruitful. You know, the, the more conservative setups playing on sites itself and maybe trying to take that orb early on denying access from the enemy side i think it would just be a much better look for the side of the mortals but they seem to know better than i i, I fumbled my team names there but i'm definitely not going to mix it up because i can't help but say the team names right here and the fact that immortals have such a beautiful stack i just gotta have to say their name over and over again because they're just continuing with the aggression they're taking the fights here they have no fear of the pistols and this was an X set for Swifo grabs to it hurts the economy, but X set now way on the back foot coming into this next one. They forced up and I'm interested to see what they do here. Do they just keep forcing their way out and look to run it back in game number two? Or are we going to see something a bit conservative? Because that did not go their way at all. IMT now on double digits. They've got this bonus round under the belt. They can hang on to the SMGs that worked incredibly well in that one and this bonus round is not only a bonus for the weapon but it should be for the actual round typically this is where you see rifles coming out from xset right but it's gonna be and a marshal oh the new sheriff is out here r has to reload every time they fall victim shot up gets away but it's a trade one for one and running out of ammo just feels so bad <laughs> I still have to love, though, that Immortals are fighting mid. They really don't have fear of the pistols, which is something that you see so commonly. But I guess the egos are just about even, like you mentioned before, so anything goes. The Sheriff, unfortunately, has abandoned his post, and another one might look to step up. But the HP is incredibly low on the defenders, and Xset somehow might sneak this one away. It seems that the late round call will be maybe a rotate over towards A, but that's even assuming they can get that far, because look who's behind. It shot up. Master in the first half, and standing. apparently a master in the second. Puts his way onto three, and I think Immortals will survive, survive the scare. No hot feelings. Oof. It's not it's done yet. showing up, though, and he does 
have a specter although on 16 hp you don't really want to take the battles that's exactly why it's a 4k for shot up like you said immortals just right back to not only that win column but the drawing board they gave up a few they battle it back it's pistol they win a force which you could probably expect from this exit roster and i believe they did get that so they did get the spike down on the first so some extra credits you're thinking maybe they force immortals just took the fight right to them and it paid off uh, i mean i guess in credits but it paid off so incredibly well now they're one away from map point they have an operator in the hands of chemicals who has been absolutely huge and he's just going to hold it down towards b where everybody is stacked up here from x set immortals was such a question mark heading into this game despite their mm -hmm. great performances so far in this tournament that why is and just apparently from the eye test a little research has done Ooh. Except they don't want to be shut up either. They were also heavy overdogs heading into this one. Again, they fell TSM yesterday, but right now they are the ones being fallen. What in the world is that double kill from Shot Up? That completely flips the script. And now everything is a big question mark this time for Exit. They're being completely and systematically destroyed by Shot Up. He has to bring out the sidearm, but that's not going to be enough to finish up. So, Immortals, maybe keep this one up the next set they all have to fight back as hard as they can I was gonna say this is a scary spot they have to cross for the spike but a nice shrouded step is going to allow Aaron to pick that one up but can he get out now as chemicals holds this angles I would imagine the play left. is over towards a at the very least you do not want to have to pick this up especially when Chemicals is the wielder. There's that shrouded step used. It's going to be a fake to hang out by yellow box once more. And with the man advantage, they can play one just about everywhere. Gangs oh are going to sit down. That's the spike. Now Thwaipo with 10 seconds will fall as well. And I mean, it would have taken uh, a monolithic effort match to be able to point. get that done with just 10 seconds left. IMT pushed to match point here in the economy for X set. It's a yard sale by, and we'll see what they're able to get done with it. It feels so easy to point out Shot Up as being phenomenal, and, and for good reason, he is mm -hmm. phenomenal. But, God, just gangsta with that shot. He's only died four times, mind you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they've only lost four rounds. He had, really has been so good at surviving and providing so much good way. recon for his teammates. Like, that right there is just something else entirely. But let's get on to this round because it's already begun and we're already in the thick of it. Chemicals finds the opener and the push actually just might come immediately. Exit want to up the pace. They're up in the pace. They have the SMGs. The blades go down for Exit, but they come up for Immortals as IMT grabs one. Chemicals can be the benefactor. And it's all down it's to this. Done. It's all down to Weeded. Wow. It's going to Defenders close out. Win. Hashtag wreck the set here as IMT grab a win. On Icebox, 13 to 4, going up 1 0 in this series. A bit of a surprise. Let's be completely honest here. Exit, after what happened yesterday, it was a lights out performance from them, I can tell. It looks like you had your lights out there as well. But yeah. Immortals, <laughs> God, I, I wish I could have seen all their games so far. There's just so many games going on yesterday. I couldn't watch every single one, but they have been thoroughly impressing me. Mm -hmm. It feels so easy just to toss out, oh, they're aggressive, they're aggressive, but they're aggressive at just the right times. In particular, I want to point out around previously where Gangsta actually did hit that crazy shot when they're both holding towards B, him over towards Kitchen, but Chemicals was right there with an op inside the smoke. And I think he had the discipline enough to hold back, let Gangsta play first contact and trade out if necessary. That's the sort of aggression that you're chasing because it's the fundamentals plus a little bit more. Exet are looking blown out of the water right now. And it's not even that they're individually doing terrible. Mm -hmm. I just think Immortals are on a whole nother level right now. But map two is going to be a completely different instance because this is going to be the map pick of Exet Tanner. It is the map pick. And I think my question was answered, right? Why is right. with a 50% win rate on Icebox, Immortals choosing to go that way? Especially when their one victory out of the two came for it was a 13 11 over cloud nine blue so a really close game that doesn't necessarily cement for me as a spectator or somebody just looking through the stats to say yeah i think immortals is great on this map it, it's, you know that's hey that's a coin flip to me it is actually 50 50 but they make me eat my words they make me a believer on icebox as you pointed out it is going to be x set the map pick coming up next and it's going to be haven 
we haven't seen haven yet today i don't even know if we saw haven yesterday it feels like a minute since i've even seen haven in my solo queue game so i'm glad that we're going to be headed that way and x set have this uphill battle they have to come back 13 to 4 it doesn't feel great but hey they're the titan killers they came in they took down tsm in a very close series so there's nothing that deters me from thinking that we are going to go to game three but before we get to game three we have to worry about game two and before we get to game two we have to worry about a break as these guys rest and refit guys we're going to hop away for just a second when we come back we're going to haven